songs and all those messages and I had all those testimonies is that why you came no you don't want to be a spectator I am going to be a partaker of the miracle power of God in Jesus name it says and Jesus stood still and he called them and said what will ye that I should do unto you now before I continue answer that question look at your left self look at your body look at the pain look at the sickness look at the infirmity look at the impossibility and answer the question what will ye that I shall do unto you have you answered him I said that you answered him if you have answered him that solution will come tonight in Jesus. And look at verse 31. Verse 31, they say unto him, Lord, they accepted him as their Lord. They believed him as their Lord. And they opened their mouth and they called him Lord. That's what you should do. You should understand that you can't have self-management and get everything you need in life making yourself the lord of your own life the controller of your own life you cannot have all the favor of heaven all the blessing of heaven all the healing flowing from him if you make yourself the lord the final authority and the final uh, person controller of your life. You must accept him. You must take him. Lord, if you make, uh, you know, one uh, man, old man down there, if you make him the controller of your life and the giver of everything you need and everything you want and say that man or that madame is the controller is the manager of my life any problem i have he is the one to solve it then jesus is out of your equation and the lordship of christ will not be effective in your life if you make wood stone iron idol you make that the lord of your life you cannot have what you want and dream of you are going to have but when you say jesus the savior jesus the healer Jesus the deliverer is the Lord of my life and today I come to him I surrender myself to him without any rival without any limitation without any any restriction Christ will be the Lord of my life when you call him Lord when you make him Lord and when you submit to the Lordship of Christ favor will come upon your life the goodness of God will be activated for your life in Jesus name they say unto him Lord that our eyes may be opened that our sickness may be healed that our infirmity may be taken away uh, look at the next verse there in verse 34 so Jesus had compassion on them that's the compassion of Christ is activated by our surrender unto him that's the compassion of the Lord it's activated by our faith in him that's the compassion of the Lord it's activated by totally relying upon him and we express the reassurance that we know he can heal us and he will heal us he will heal you he'll give you salvation that's the first thing that's the one that takes us to heaven he'll give you salvation that's the one that brings us into the family of god he'll give you salvation that's the thing that brings righteousness in our lives 
First of all, we make him Lord. And he gives us forgiveness, freedom. He gives us deliverance from our sin. And he gives us salvation that makes our name to be written in the book of life in heaven. We call him Lord. And now, what do you want? Compassion. What do you want? You want kill. What do you want? You want healing. What do you want? You want deliverance from everything that has bound you. It's coming and it will come to your life today in Jesus' name. And he touched their eyes. He touched their eyes. It was taught when you place your hand there, when you have the challenge, a sign will come. The supernatural hand will come. That great power irresistible by Satan by sickness that almighty healing hand delivering hand redemptive hand will come over your hand and the healing will come and the deliverance will come he touched their eyes he will touch that fiber he will touch that paralysis it will touch that stroke. It will touch that deafness. It will touch that incurable disease in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And he touched their eyes and immediately your miracle is coming now. Immediately, instantaneously. By the way, that's how salvation comes. Salvation Jesus does not come gradually. I was smoking 10 cigarettes every day. But now I went to the crusade. I'm smoking eight. I'm smoking seven. And gradually, 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 the cigarettes are decreasing. No. Immediately, instantaneously, he'll brush up and, and he will kick up that terrible Seek need habit in your life Lord, in Jesus' name. You know, I used to I have a wife, and then I used to go to one, two, three, four. And now I came to the crusade, and out of those four concubines. Uh, I've subtracted one. I've subtracted two. Now I only go to two. Uh, uh, that's no salvation. A self management. When it comes to you, when it touches your heart, when it turns your life around, every evil woman, every sinning woman, every adulterous woman, every fornicating habit, it wipe out of your life instantaneously in Jesus' name. And the same thing with a healing. You come to the Lord and you say, Lord, I want healing. I want deliverance. I want to be totally set free. It says, and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him and they followed him. You see, after they got their sight, their miracle, they didn't go back to idol. After they got their sight, their miracle, they didn't go back to, you know, they go to celebrate their miracle with a wine drinking. No. They followed him. After he has saved you, after he has healed you, if you are really healed and you are grateful to the Lord, the spirit of the Lord will quicken you. And then you follow, you follow, you follow Christ. You follow Christ in your life, you follow Christ in worship, you follow Christ by a life that is totally changed and totally transformed. That attitude, that reassurance, that power will come to your life tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Mark chapter 9, I mean from verse 21. Mark Chapter 9, verse 21. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came 
unto him and he said of a child that child that son of that father had been suffering for a long time from childhood whatever sickness you had from childhood tonight the solution has come tonight the healing has come power will come from on high and roll that long-standing mountain of a problem of sickness roll it away from your life in jesus name the sage of each child verse 22 in verse 22 and of times the Lord. it has cast him said, the into Lord. the fire that's the evil spirit a dumb this, spirit the evil power tormenting that child's life throw him into the fire and into the waters to drown him to burn him up to destroy him if but if thou canst do anything have compassion you see that is compassion that heals us in the compassion that works the miracle in our lives if thou the Lord. canst do anything the have Lord. compassion on us i am doctor and help us you help you tonight he never rejects the request of anyone that is sincerely asking for help. Help me. I cannot help myself. Save me. I cannot save myself. Heal me. I cannot heal myself. Deliver me. I cannot deliver myself. Break every yoke in my life. I cannot break all those yokes by myself. Therefore, Lord, here am I. The sin wants to destroy me. The sin wants to pull me into the destruction everlasting. Everlasting. It says, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. It will help us. Me in particular. Me in particular, whatever the problem, you in particular, that hell, healing hell, saving hell, redemptive hell, it turning around hell, transforming, transforming hell, it will come to you tonight in Jesus. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, that's all. If thou canst believe, you believe in Christ tonight, how do I sure I believe in Christ? I hate what he hates. I love what he loves. I come to him. I stay with him. I don't go back to Satan. I don't go back to sin. I don't go back to evil. If you say you come to Christ, you believe in Christ, and you go back to Satan, to his enemy, you didn't really believe. That's no belief. If you say you believe in the Savior, and you go back to your normal, common, habitual, regular sin, no, that's no belief. I'll be falling, I'll be falling. You say you believe in the Savior, you quit what you hate. You give up what he hates and down. you come to him and you abide in him. If he continue in my word, so that's faith. Then are ye my disciples indeed. I believe if you truly believe, you hate what he hates, you love what he loves, you abide with him after you have come to him. If thou Canst believe all things are possible to him that believe it. Tonight Ola. is your night. Ola. Night Praise of salvation. Night of healing. Night of deliverance. Uh, 
it will happen by his compassion tonight in Jesus name Amen repentance reliance reassurance you repent you turn away from everything contrary to the righteous life repentance with the situation reliance totally relying on the lord and then reassurance that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved shall be healed shall be delivered shall be set free your hour has come my time has come Say that my time has come. The time of salvation has come for you. The time of repentance, the time of conversion has come. And whosoever will repent and be converted, his sins will be blotted out. And your name will be reaching in the book of life. Ex bowed and eyes closed. Ex bowed and eyes closed. The favor of heaven is coming unto you. The forgiveness of heaven is coming in unto you the salvation of the lord that change of heart and that transformation of life is coming unto you right now as you repent as you make the promise to the lord the shed my shed that you stole is closed that you stole and other things that you stole you realize that if you truly repent you must return them and you say i can't do it now but i will do it that's what zakiel said zakiel said i will do it and the lord said this day is salvation shall come unto you. You believe in the Lord and you are repenting your sin. Truly, truly, today I offer myself to the Lord in prayer and I repent wherever you are. Raise the Lord. Raise up the hand and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. I believe in the Lord. I make him my Lord now. She will not be my Lord anymore. She part now will not be my lord anymore the concubine will not be my lord anymore and no sinful partner will be my lord anymore i offer myself to the lord what are you that trust your sincerity raise up your hand and say lord i'm here i make you the lord of my life i turn away from my sin and i believe that you are my savior and lord from today raise up that hand raise up that hand if you are raising up your hand you'll stand up you're standing up for jesus you say yes i turn away from my sin yes i turn away from all the evil in my life in my heart yes i give myself to the lord fully completely without a rival and without any reservation raise up your hand and stand up right there you can see your sincerity you can see your uh, you know your commitment unto him that you turn away from your sin and you are turning into the Lord today and that salvation will come to you right now stand up right there stand up right there as we're standing up if you're online do the same thing make up your mind I repent make up your mind I turn away from my sin make up your mind all those evil things will not be the Lord of my life anymore and you raise up the hand and you stand up you are watching over the television do the same thing a change a transformation conversion is coming upon you now raise up that hand raise up that hand and stand up online anywhere you are this is a moment of decision turning away from everything that is evil and turning to the Lord to abide and to stay with the Lord for the rest of your life the Lord is going to answer now and give you salvation I didn't hear your amen there now. 
and as we pray that joy of salvation will come to you the peace of salvation will come to you and the grace of God that appears unto all men to bring that salvation will appear to you right there keep that hand up I'm praying for you now father in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you for your love we thank you for your compassion. We thank you, Lord, for what you want to do in every life that turns unto you, confessing and forsaking their sin. Lord, I pray that your forgiveness will come unto them as they have faith in you and rely on you wholeheartedly tonight in Jesus' name. The salvation of the Lord come to you right now. The forgiveness of the Lord come to you right Jesus, now. The and the power come. to go and sin no more. Come lives. into every one of you, you now you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You've thank your you, salvation. Lord. Say thank you, Don't Lord, you with me. Say it aloud. Thank you, Lord. We Jesus. know you have done it. You cannot deny those who repent and believe on Christ. We know you have saved them. Confirm it, Lord, in their heart with a witness and with a good life that follows. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. We're going to have a session of uh, counseling now. Our counselors are there with you. And you will, you know, get some details from uh, you. We call on a moderate chain overseer tonight to help us during this time. And then after that, the healing, the miracle, with your name attached unto it, will not miss you in Jesus' name. God bless you. If you are clapping, clap unto Jesus. Those of us that stood up for giving our life to Jesus Christ, we have taken a very wise decision. We welcome you to the kingdom of God. The counselors are all around you. Can they give your correct name? The correct address, the correct phone number, so that thereafter we can reach you and continue to help you to stand in the decision you have taken. Counselors, let's please go all over to the language section. Some people are outside the camp, outside the fence. Some people are far down there behind, under the trees. Kindly let's reach unto every one of them. Give your correct name, your correct address, your correct phone number. It is so that hereafter, you can be reached I am never to help you to never stand back, in the wise decision you have taken. I'm never going back. Never going back. If you have taken this decision and the counselors have not reached you, you can beckon unto them. They are all around you. The counselors are all around. correct name, the correct address, the correct phone number. I'm never going back. Say I won't go back. I won't go back. All the details that will help us to reach you hereafter, kindly give it to the counselors. You 
taking a very important decision. And God will help you to stand in that decision you have taken. Tomorrow, by 3 p.m., all of us that have taken this decision this evening, have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you have repented of your sin, and those of us that took similar decision yesterday, on Friday, and on Thursday, we'll be having a special section for all of us. That section is tied to lunch hour with Jesus. It's by 3 p.m. in the hall towards your right hand side, right here in this compound. It is very important for you to attend that section. If you are online, you have taken this decision, just check under your screen. There is a link going on on your screen. Click on that link, complete the pro format on the link, and send it back. It is so that we'll be able to reach you hereafter to help you in the wise decision you have taken. If you are listening on the radio, on the television and you have taken this decision please send your address your name your phone number to this number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three you have taken this decision on radio, or you are listening on radio, or you are listening on television. I have taken this decision this evening. Please send your name, your address, your phone number to this number plus 234 915 444 92. Six three. You can send a WhatsApp message. You can also send on Telegram. You can send a text message if you reach us. Counselors, please listen. Get to all those that have taken decision and take their contacts. Shortly after now. Our Father in the Lord will be coming to pray for miracles, and you will have your own tonight. It's a night of complete cure. Your sicknesses will be cured. You will go back home with joy. After the message, you wait to share your testimony and to also listen to other people's testimony. Don't go away, you wait behind to participate in the testimony section. To give your own testimony and to listen to others. Counselors, please bless Increase our attention. And if you have completed your own section of the counseling kindly signify so that we will know. You have taken this decision and you are online. Please check your screen. There is a link going on on your screen. Click on that link. Complete the pro format and send it back. You have listened to this message and you have taken the issue and you are on radio or you are on television. Please send your name, your address, your contact number to this phone line. Plus 234 915 
0244-9263. Tomorrow by 3 p.m., all of us that took decision for Christ on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, today, Sunday, we'll be meeting for a special section, lunch hour with Jesus by 3 p.m. It's going to be in a hall by the right-hand side right here in this compound. And on September 3, on September 3, there will be banquet for all the converts, those on online, those of us that took decision and we listening to this message on radio, there will be banquet for all of us by 3 p.m. For those of us in Oshogbo here, it will be holding at our headquarters church power line. And in all the region headquarters, it will be holding. And healing all that you are oppressed of the devil. Remember tomorrow morning. Tonight, it will be ministers, the final night church the workers, Jesus and professional conference with by 7 a.m. Ministers, worker, church workers, and professional conference and you, by 7 a.m. It will be holding to you. in Work Deep Center that will bring you your 7 a.m. You cannot afford to miss it. It's for church workers. Ministers and professionals. God bless you. Welcome to the tonight is going to be your own night. Of souls. Thank you to Pastor so I'm sitting Dr. there for having me telling worship. God, We're going to encounter God, Jesus together tonight. Let's give me complete kill. Complete kill. Complete kill. From spiritual sicknesses, from physical sicknesses, from matrimonial sicknesses, financial sicknesses. Want Mental sicknesses, heart this sicknesses, so kidney sicknesses, bone sicknesses, bones. tissue sicknesses. Lord, give me complete I cure. With all my mind, complete cure. The I compassionate Jesus the is here in our midst tonight. Drifting. He will grant you complete cure. A he will grant you complete cure. You will not miss your blessing. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't Praise know. the Lord. And he told me that I was not Everybody, alone. you can stand up. My time he has come. My miracle around. is here. My feet on Deliverance here. Healing here. Look at the way you are saying it. The Lord will have compassion upon you. And that compassion will roll away every challenge and every problem you have right there tonight in Jesus' name. You raise up your hand and you lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And you know that Christ is the compassionate Christ. And it brings complete kill. And that complete kill will come to you right now. You will not miss it. The Lord will put a testimony in your mouth right there today. You must check up because it will happen. After the final amen, that place you are putting your hand now, you remove your hand lower, behold, the healing is there already. And what you could not do before, you couldn't walk before, you stand up, you walk. You couldn't see before, you open your eyes lower, behold, look at the people, you will see clearly. The noise that had been in your brain, in your mind, in your head. The moment we say the final amen, that demonic noise will vanish away. Healing. 
the Librans, miracle. Come in now, press up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, in Jesus' name, we know that Jesus, the only begotten Son, is our compassionate Christ healing us. We're asking, Lord, that right now your healing comes upon everyone in Jesus' name. From the head to the toe, any part, every part of the body, we pray, Lord, that your power will penetrate everywhere right now. Bring problem, insanity. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. And I pray for those who have any swelling, hunchback, goiter, fibroid, elephantiasis, whatever, and yeah, here is the moment of your healing. The moment of your deliverance. Be healed in Jesus' name. That swelling, come out in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, Christ is still the same today, is opening blind eyes. This is your time. Your blind eyes will open. Your dim sight will clear up. Father, confirm it upon every blind man, blind woman, blind child. Give them perfect sight in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, dumbness cannot withstand the name of our compassionate Christ. And deafness cannot withstand the name of the compassionate Christ. Deafness, dumbness, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Begin to hear very well. Begin to speak out clearly. Those who are born like that, I pray this miracle will come to you right now. That the Lord will reverse every negative thing from your birth in Jesus' name. Every form of pain in your body, in the bone, inside you, in your joints. Lord, I pray, pain, right hand side there. Pain in the front there. Pain on that side there. Pain for that person online. I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer is your final moment in that place. Whatever the stage, stage one, stage two, stage three, or stage four, doesn't matter. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Also. You have to clear away from there. And I command that also be healed in Jesus' name. That pile, you're healed in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, everywhere, for everyone, whatever the ailment, this is a healing moment for everyone. Deliverance moment for everyone. Lord, manifest your power. Demonstrate your power. Lord, I pray, stretch forth your powerful hand upon everyone tonight in Jesus' name. It is done. It is manifested. It is demonstrated right now. Lord, show yourself strong on everyone there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say it aloud. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, 
we praise that final amen at final life stage check up yourself check up yourself your healing is there your miracle is there your deliverance is there already you are welcome sir You remember this, you the crusade for Jesus, the miracle worker. Your time has come. My time has come. Look at that word, miracle. M I tell me. R tell me A. Give me C. Give me L, final E. What dealt with M is the miracle of mercy has come your way. What dealt with I, that impartial intercessor, interceding and pleading and praying and walking for every individual. Today, we come to R, that Jesus the reigning redeemer for the repentant and the righteous tonight he'll work miracle in your life father we thank you at this time we bless your name what a great and mighty god you are and your son you have said that you will redeem us he will turn our lives around and he will bring resurrection power in every life today we come expecting you will reign in every life in jesus name lord jesus reign in our hearts reign over our problems reign over sickness reign over satanic attack and affliction reign in every life in jesus name and lord bring everyone up that we will reign with christ even here on earth in jesus name Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can see now. Tonight, we are coming to Jesus again, the reigning redeemer. That means the redeemer who reigns. He reigns over every problem. He reigns over principalities and power. He reigns over the pain and the peculiarities of your life. The Lord will manifest himself unto you tonight and you will reign in every part of your life in Jesus' name. Jesus, the, right, the reigning redeemer, for the repentance that is for those who come out of darkness and come to the light because he is the light of the world those who will come out of their sin and come to the savior is the savior of the whole world behold the lamp of god that takes away the sin of the world and he will reign over the people that leave all the pollutions of the world all the defilement of the world and he come to him as a deliverer he reigns over the repentant and he reigns over the righteous the people who allow christ to walk in them to walk in their hearts to walk in their lives and they become righteous through his righteousness and through his sacrifice he reigns over them is jesus the reigning redeemer for the repentance and the righteous look at luke chapter one in luke chapter one reading from verse 31 and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth 
his son and thou shalt call Here his I name am. Jesus look at verse 32 Here that Jesus it shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give him unto him the throne of his father David verse 33 it tells us and he shall reign Jesus and he shall reign son of God and he shall reign the son of David and he shall reign the one that went to the cross and he died for us he was buried and on the third day he rose again he shall reign the angel declared that he shall reign over the house of Jacob for forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end that kingdom will be established in your hearts today because christ will reign reign in your heart reign over in your home and reign in your habitation and the lord reigns without a rival in the heart in the mind in the life of the people that receive him the repentant and the righteous we're looking at three things in a message tonight number one we're looking at the restoration the restoration here is the redeemer the redeemer that comes and it comes so that you will be restored the restoration by the revealed redeemer many people do not know that the redeemer has come but the scriptures reveal him to us the Father reveals him to us, the Lord and the Word of God reveals him to me. us. The restoration by the, the revealed Redeemer. Number two is the Listen rain. Me. The rain from the reviving Redeemer. He revives us. He makes us come Susan. alive. He drives away the spirit of death God, out no, of our I lives because it, he comes and, it and he brings the rain that comes from heaven the rain that comes from on high the rain Praise that comes Lord. from the redeemer who revives us number three is the return of the reigning redeemer he returns he reigns now over Amen. every heart Whether yielded I, unto Praise him. God. He reigns now Hallelujah. over everyone that Praise will voluntarily God. say, Amen. I surrender. Sing along with me. I Praise submit. God. I give Hallelujah. myself Hallelujah. unto you. Praise and God. he reigns Amen. over them. He reigns over families that will be given unto the Lord. He reigns Praise over God. fellowships that are given unto the Lord. Amen. He reigns over the community that will come as a whole community and they surrender themselves unto the Lord but then he returns he's coming again he came the first time to make a sacrifice he came the first time to shed his blood for the people that will recognize him as Savior as Lord and now is coming again and when he comes again he will not only reign in individuals he will not only reign in small pockets of people everywhere in the world he comes and he reigns over every part of the world the reigning so redeemer is okay. returning and i pray that Daddy today as he comes as he lives as he abides in you i pray he will reign over every challenge the in Lord your life good. in jesus name Amen. Number one is the restoration by the revealed Redeemer. The restoration by the revealed Redeemer. You are wondering, is that for me? Yes, he restores the prodigal son. 
the one who has gone away, the one who has strayed away, Christ is here today. And it brings restoration to you as the prodigal son, the prodigal sinner, the prodigal father. The prodigal mother, the prodigal child, the prodigal daughter, he comes and he brings restoration. He comes to give restoration if you, you knew the Lord before, but then you have strayed away. You have gone away. He comes for restoration to restore the prodigal son. He comes to restore the polluted the polluted slave. You see, there are people Praise when they go astray, the Lord. they surrender themselves to if the pollutions of the world, the, Lord. the character of the world, the lifestyle of the world, the worldliness in the day. world, and that pollutes them. The Lord it pollutes their heart, it pollutes the their mind, you. it pollutes the their Lord nature. And Christ has come today. He'll bring restoration unto you, you in Jesus name and miracle because will happen in your life in I Jesus name to bring restoration Join me to, to the prodigal the son Pastor it comes w. to bring restoration w. to the polluted slave and now Thank he comes Pastor. to bring restoration Excellency to the perverted soul you, you see all the and things in the world the habits of the world, the lifestyle of the world, they pervert the soul. Thank and you, today, and you cannot restore you. yourself. And you God cannot say, I'll pull myself up by the straps of my shoe. You can't do that. But Tonight, there is a redeemer that comes from heaven and day. is revealed unto Great us by the word of the Father. He says, oh, this is my my son in your life in whom in Jesus I am name. well pleased. Listen to him. There will be restoration in your life. Father. In restoration in every life tonight we thank you in Jesus you name and we're looking at Psalm 51 and we're looking at verses behold that desire is truth in the inward part and in the hidden part thou shall make me to know wisdom look at verse 7 in verse 7 he says purge me with iso and I shall be clean here for everyone. It's David praying. Deliverance for prodigal everyone. king. Joy he was king, but in he became life. prodigal. Thank you, Lord, he became you polluted. He became perverted. And he knew we he could not restore himself. It takes the redeemer everyone from heaven. Here. It everyone takes the online. Lord. It takes everyone the king of kings and the lord of lords to, re to restore the this for the girl oh, man, this polluted man, Jesus, and this perverted man. And, and so he prayed, he said me, and the one Emma in need of restoration. You, you are the men. one in need of restoration. He will restore you tonight. As you come, for as every came, pollution, and you see your perversion, and you see your going astray, and you come, and you say, Lord, here am I. I want restoration. Purge me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Tonight is that night. It will cleanse you on the inside. It will cleanse the language of your mouth. It will cleanse the thoughts of your heart. It will cleanse your personality and all those things that make you prodigal. Unprofitable, you wash everything away. You will become totally new today. You will be as white as snow. You'll become whiter than snow. Somebody shout, Amen. Look at that verse 8. In verse 8, make me to hear joy and gladness. The sinner has no joy, permanent joy. The drunkard, 
has no joy, permanent joy. The hypocrite has no joy, permanent joy. And the secret sinner has no joy, permanent joy. But when you come to Christ, when you come to the Redeemer, it's revealed to you tonight. And you say, Lord, I need joy. Make me to fear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. The bone and the heart, the conscience, the inner life of the sinner has no joy. It's broken, broken heart, broken mind, broken personality. The remembrance of his sin, the remembrance of his evil gives him consternation and gives him him condemnation, but there's a redeemer, the redeemer from heaven revealed unto us. He will take all those broken bones and mend them tonight in Jesus' name. In verse 9, verse 9 says, Hide thy face from my sins. He said, I know you've been looking at my sin. He looks at our sin, at the evil we have done. That at the corruption the in our lives, at the pollution and perversion in our lives, and he shakes his said, He says, I cannot Jesus fellowship with Genesis him, I cannot be Exodus with him, I cannot answer his prayer if I regard iniquity, transgression, sin in my heart. The Lord, the Lord will not hear me. me. And he says, So, Lord, why don't you forgive me? Why don't you cleanse me? And why don't you take all the appearance? At the presence of my sin, why don't you take it away and hide your face from my sin and blot out, blot out, blot out my inner transgression. And there are people that do not understand that even in the Old Testament, the Lord blotted out all the iniquities of the people that repent. They think he only covered them. And when they covered them, if anything happens, the wind will blow the covering away. No, from Old, Old Testament until now, he makes provision that God blots out all our iniquities. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, create in me a clean heart. And this prodigal king, this perverted king, King and this man that had gone astray and doubled into sin, his heart had been polluted, his heart had been perverted. He said, Lord, I need a clean heart. The thoughts are not clean, the ways were not clean, the actions were not clean. Now, create in me a clean heart, oh God, only God can that do that and he will do it for you tonight he will take your heart turn your heart around and he will cleanse your heart and all that evil evil thought evil mind Evil ways, the Lord will cast everything away. It will cleanse you. It will blot out all those iniquities and then create in you a clean heart. Actually, that's the evidence of salvation. You know, somebody says, I'm saved, and their heart is not clean. Somebody says, I'm saved, and the life is not clean. Somebody says, I'm saved. And I am born again, and his language is not clear. Somebody says, I am born again, I am a child of God, and his appearance is not clean. His appearance, her appearance, makes people to think about sin. But when we were saved, when we are born again, when the Redeemer, when he touches our lives and transforms our lives, he creates in us a, a clean heart 
and renew a right spirit within me. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, cast me not away from thy presence. King David, why you pray like that? What he says, I know what I've done. The man committed adultery. And those who have sinned against me, them will I blot out of my book, which I have written in you, that God had the right. God had the decision to cast him away because of his adultery. He even committed murder. He knew that what he had done merited the judgment of God. And we pray here on earth so that we will not need that judgment when we have left here. He said, cast me not away from thy presence. And it says, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You understand? My spirit shall not always strive with men. He speaks to our conscience. He speaks to our life. He prevents evil from our character. But when we continue in that evil, he leaves us alone. We're empty. He leaves us alone. We only have the human heart and then we have the bad, evil spirit of the devil when the Holy Ghost is gone. No place will be vacant. Something must fill that place and if the Holy Spirit does not fill that place, Please, then if the harassing spirit, the evil spirit that will take the place because your heart cannot be vacant. And so he said, Give me your Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit abide with me so that my life will be straightened out again. Tonight you have come. It will straighten out your life. Tonight you are out the your most life. Exalted Tonight you have come. He will Jesus make your Holy Spirit to bear witness with your heart. Forgiven, heart. set and free, so cleansed, having a clean heart. A new thing will happen in your heart today in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. Verse 12 said, Restore unto me. Emmanuel, Restore unto me. It's the redeemer revealed from heaven that comes to, re to restore unto us restore unto me the joy of thy salvation salvation has joy Salvation has peace. Salvation has sincerity. And salvation has happiness and gladness. When you are saved, it takes the sorrow away. It takes the sadness away. And all of the evil that your sin has attracted in your life, he forgives. He sets you free. And then he gives you restoration. Restore on to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy holy spirit and with thy free spirit is coming tonight it's coming to you it will be done in jesus name and it wants to take your life and then does it happen the most powerful person happens to the prodigal son, what happens to the polluted slave, what happens to the perverted soul, that there will be a restoration of salvation, of joy, of peace, of Righteousness. Look at Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now. You see, you have to come. The prodigal son said, I will arise. And I will go to my father. And I will say, My father, I blew it. And I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your higher servants. 
must have the decision. I will arise for you and go to the Father and go to the Lord with all your pollution, with all your perversion, and with all your prodigality. You come and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tonight, salvation has come. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, and though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Amen. Now you see that uh, say, you see that was the scarlet that is red, and then it even says crimson red like crimson before you come to the Lord before you come for the salvation red danger the danger of damnation red the danger of eternal perdition red is the danger that you face because your sin has red as crimson. Look at the difference. God Some people say, I am saved. The power I'm born again. God but we cannot see any difference. The difference man, between the new woman, life and the old girl, life is the difference between white and red. You cannot mistake it. When you come to the Lord, He washes you as white as snow, even whiter than snow. And you cannot mistake that. Look at that. That's why Look at and this. This is red, and they are very different. The difference, the difference between the sinner and the saint. The difference between the prodigal son and the pardoned son is the difference between red and white. And it will be very, very clear that God has done something, something in your heart, something in your soul. Something in your life that nobody can mistake, and it will happen today. Amen. Give me alpha location. Amen. And all those all over the globe, here is the difference between the sinner and the son of God. Here is the difference between the prodigal and the pattern. The difference between the red and the white. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, if you be willing, and obedient, he said, Come if you're willing to come, if you're obedient as you come, if you lay your sin at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, the revealed Redeemer. If you be willing and obedient, he shall eat the good of the land. What if he's not willing? What if the prodigal son said, I don't want to face the shame of my going away. I don't want to face the shame of my pollution. I, don't, I can't face the shame of my perdition. What if the prodigal son had remained in the far country? He will die there and he will not be in fellowship with the Father for the rest of eternity. That's why he tells us in verse 20. In verse 20, it says, but if you refuse and rebel, if you refuse to repent, if you refuse to come back from the wilderness of sin, if you refuse the voice that is calling and pleading with you, that today there is salvation, today there is restoration, if you refuse and rebel. Now, understand those two words, and you know, they are together, they are partners together. Together. Anybody who refuses the voice of the Savior is rebelling against the Savior. Any 
anybody who refuses the voice of repentance that we shall repent and come to the Lord, the refuser is a rebel. And it says, but if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devout with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. You will not refuse forgiveness. You will not refuse salvation. You will not refuse the grace of God that comes to you tonight. And he says, come, come out of darkness, come out of sin, come out of idolatry, and come out of those evil things you have been doing, and come to the Lord, the Redeemer. Restoration has come for you in Jesus' name. Restoration for me. Decision that you will you didn't be say it a well. child of God that you will forgive be it confirmed from heaven in Jesus name Jeremiah chapter 30 I'm reading from verse 17 Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17 for I will restore health unto thee the Lord will also restore your health Sickness will vanish away. All the pains will be totally gone as you come and you receive the Redeemer. For I will restore health unto thee, I will heal thee of thy wounds. You lost a great amen there. Says the Lord, because he called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, and out of them shall proceed, shall proceed thanksgiving. you give testimony tonight. And the voice of them that make merry, merriment and joy will come to the prodigal son that, re that returns home in Jesus' name. And I will multiply them. Multiplication in your life. Multiplication of blessing. Multiplication of joy, multiplication of all your desires being fulfilled, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Heaven needs a great amen. Number one is the restoration by the revealed Redeemer. We're coming to number two. Number two is the rain from heaven from the reviving Redeemer. The, the Redeemer revives the one who totally collapsed and my power helpless, hopeless, dead. No lie, but the Redeemer, He is the one. He comes to revive. Revival has come in your soul. Revival in your spirit. Revival in your life. The rain from the reviving Redeemer. Look at Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. It says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven. From and any other returneth man, not any other thither, from but watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth and burn. It says that Emmanuel it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. The you can tell. Something great is coming to you today. It's coming from heaven. And the rain comes from heaven for the people that stay under that coming rain and that rain that is coming upon the lives of the people. Look at verse 11. It says, So shall my word be that 
go ahead forth out of my mouth my word what word is that the word of his grace that comes from heaven what word is that the word of salvation that comes from heaven it says that word comes and is the word of his grace is the word of his salvation what's that what's the word is the word of promise he promises us and he looks at all the promises and he says just like the rain comes down so the word of my promise coming down and the promise to save you the promise to heal you the promise to restore you the promise to turn your life around for the better the promise will be fulfilled tonight so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but I say, it shall accomplish that the which I please. The, the word of healing, Jesus the word of deliverance. The Lord says, it will come forth. And once it comes to you and you hear, it will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. The word of uprightness. You know, you've been wobbling and you couldn't walk straight. You couldn't walk right. You couldn't talk right you couldn't behave well and then the word of his uprightness comes to you and it says that word will not leave you to remain the way you were in the past a new change will come in your life transformation will come in your life you come here if you actually receive the word accept the word Believe the, the word, today, confess the word, the and you say and that, that word was mine. The Lord, the Lord spoke that word, he spoke the word to me, and I accept that. I my believe that, I confess that, I hold on to that, that it will be fulfilled kind of in your life. You. The word of salvation fulfilled in your life, the word of healing fulfilled in your life. The word of deliverance fulfilled in your life. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Look at you, sir. Excelling. Chapter ten, the sweat rain. The rain is coming. I said, Say the rain amen. is coming. Showers, showers of blessing. Chapter thirteen, showers of blessing. Don't go, don't go. It will come upon you right there. Showers, rain, the rain. Of righteousness. Look at it. So to yourself in righteousness. What did he say that? They had been sowing to themselves on righteousness. They have been sowing to themselves on godliness. They have been sowing to themselves on truthfulness. They have not been walking in the truth. And the truth is falling on the street. And it says now, turn around. Let there be a change. What you were doing yesterday was sowing in unrighteousness. What you were doing before this time is sowing in godliness. What you were doing is so in, in hypocrisy no and untruthfulness. No it says the power of the man. Of the man. Times and come to the Lord and so to yourselves in righteousness. And then you reap in mercy. Break up your final ground. Sometimes the heart, the ground, where the word is coming is hiding because Jesus, many feet have gone over and that Jesus, ground many thoughts have gone over that heart and now you hear the word he bounces back he doesn't penetrate he says break up 
cultivate that final ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and reign. Look at that. Till he comes and reign righteousness upon you. It will rain righteousness upon you. And when that rain comes, the rain of righteousness, it will soak you on the outside. You know, if you've been in the rain and you come, anybody looking at you will see that effect of the rain on you. You'll be refreshed. You'll be revived. You'll be renewed. You'll be clean. The rain of righteousness coming from heaven coming upon Elisha you will be visibly seen by the people that look at you, that see you. The reign of righteousness says, seek the Lord until he comes to reign righteousness upon you. Somebody says, I'm saved and the Lord, the righteous Lord, delivered me. And you look at him, you can't see any change. The same old dressing, the same old character, the same old behavior, the same old drunkenness, the same old cigarette, and the same old bad company. And I say, did you say you went to the Lord? Did you say you sowed in righteousness? I still see the way you sowed. You still sow in unrighteousness. You still sow so in ungodliness, you still so in untruthfulness, you still so in hypocrisy. Now, when we come to the Lord, and you are coming to the Lord tonight. I said you are coming to the Lord tonight. We seek the Lord until he comes to reign righteousness upon us. He will do it. I said he will do it. How will he do it? Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1. Zechariah chapter 10. We're looking at verse 1. It says, ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter. We must ask. We ask for salvation at this time in the crusade while the Lord is saving many people. We don't just sit down there. And we don't just shut our mouth and shut our eyes and shut our mind. Ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter rain. In the time of the latter rain. In the time of salvation. In the time of healing. In the time of deliverance. And it says, ask for your own portion. Nobody will take your portion from you. You will ask, ask of the Lord reign in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. You ask, and the Lord makes it, and the Lord gives you showers of rain to everyone, everyone, everyone grass in the field. Everyone that says, I'm asking. And I believe the Lord is going to grant. When you ask for forgiveness tonight, the Lord will grant your forgiveness. When you ask for cleansing tonight, the Lord will grant you cleansing. When you ask for conversion tonight, he change your heart. A change of life, a change of mind, a change of direction. When you ask for that conversion tonight, that's exactly what God will give you tonight. He will give you. Where is she? Where is she? You will not go back home empty handed. I will not be a spectator. 
Papa, did you get anything there? I heard you went for the crusade. Ah, young man, I just want to see what is happening there. You will not just see what is happening there. It will happen to you. Reign in the time of the latter in ask, and he will give them showers of rain and to everyone grass in the field. Your time has come. Miracle of salvation. Miracle of transformation. Miracle of healing. Miracle of deliverance. That will happen to you tonight. Number three now. We're looking at number three. Number three, the return of the reigning redeemer. The return of the reigning redeemer. Now, when the redeemer returns, number one, he can come to you now. He will come to you now. And there is, he will reign over the heathen. It says, ask of me. In Psalm 2, verse 8, ask of me, and I will give you the heathen for thine inheritance tonight and the uttermost part of the earth the for thy possession. The heathen, he reigns over the heathen. You have been a heathen, a pagan, in idolatry, sacrificing to the devil, sacrificing to, you know, the great, great, uh, great fathers, and doing what the Bible calls idolatry. That's heathenism. That's paganism. And when you give your heart to the Lord, idolatry will vanish away. You come out of when that idolatry now, and you confess freely, I am a heathen, but I invite Christ to reign and to rule in my life. Number one, he rules over the heathen. Number two, he rules in our heart. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I will come into him, I'll suck with him, and fellowship with him, and then he will sit on the throne of your heart, and from that throne of your heart, he will reign. Number one, he reigns over the heathen. Number two, he reigns in the heart. My son, Give me thine heart. Surrender your heart unto me. That's what we do. If we go into your heart, the reigning of the Redeemer in our heart, we must surrender that heart unto him. Reigning over the heathen, reigning in our heart, he reigns in your habitation. In your habitation. And when you get back home, that's your habitation. It will say, any idols there, you rake them past, together see, and pump them up because now Christ see, comes to reign in your habitation. If there's any talisman Jesus there, if there's any waistband there, if there is any juju kind of a ring there, he comes to reign over the heathen, he comes to reign in your heart, he comes to reign in your home, in your habitation. And, and you gather all those the things together, change. you throw them that away, the and you give Jesus the chance to reign without a rival. There is no other rival now. Christ becomes the all in all in your life. You let him reign without any sign of rebellion. There is no rival, no rivalry, and there is no rebellion. You say, Master. Master Jesus reign in my heart reign in my home reign.